be here are now studying carefully the, the statement by the quartet. Uh, and we will issue a more detailed uh, response to it, but I can say right now that we were pleased to say that the court has called for immediate return of the Palestinians uh, to the negotiating table with us without preconditions. And that has been our long-standing policy, and we, we welcome very much that, that development. Uh, beyond that, the United States and Israel are, are more closely coordinated now than they have been at any time in, in the last two years or more. Um, and we see things very much eye to eye about how to move forward. Um, we see um, the United States, as Israel emphasizes, uh, that there is no alternative to direct negotiations uh, leading to a two-state solution. And uh, the President's speech here um, in the General Assembly um, was, uh, was, was quite strong in uh, his support for Israel, in his uh, security needs, and his uh, sympathy for uh, uh, for the Israeli people and, and the, the situation they find themselves in the Middle East. And I think the most important thing was the, the, the strong uh, emphasis placed on the connection to the, the Jewish people, people of Israel, and the land of Israel. That was very much important. Where do we go from here? Well, we're going to have to see what the Palestinians decide whether to um, um, wait it out in the Security Council, whether to move to the General Assembly. Uh, that we do not know now. Uh, we know that the United States and like-minded nations are working to prevent that. Um, and uh, we'll see whether the, the Palestinians will uh, accept or reject the quartet invitation to return to negotiations. Indicates so far, indicates so far that they are uh, disposed not to accept it. We don't know that uh, finally. And you know, it seemed a few months ago like the Palestinians had a sure win here. What do you think changed the tide in our favor? I think that many uh, delegations, many heads of states, began to think this thing, the, the situation, was more clearly. And looking at the, the short and long term ramifications of the unilaterally declared Palestinian state. And they concluded, as we had concluded, as the United States had long ago concluded, that a unilaterally declared Palestinian state will not bring about either statehood for the Palestinians or peace of the region. Um, and could actually be the source of, uh, of some profound upheaval and danger. And they uh, began to take it slowly and take a second look at it. Got it. And did some of it also have to do with our willingness to work with the Quartet and the Palestinians' refusal to do so? Well, we've always worked with the Quartet. Uh, no, but I mean on this specific proposal. On this specific proposal, the uh, uh, Prime Minister of has traveled to Europe uh, numerous times, numerous times, and has met with Europe, and uh, always in contact with, uh, with European leaders, our, our negotiators in contact with European leaders. I deal with, uh, with my European counterparts, my Quartet counterparts in Washington all the time. Um, so we are communicating at various levels, and uh, um, the, as I said before, there's a better understanding now of the, of the type of threats that this unilaterally you know, declared a state would pose, not just to Israel, but to the Palestinians themselves. And do you have a sense of what made that change? Like what shifted? I think they just uh, understood that okay. uh, the unilaterally declared Palestinian state would not bring about statehood and, and would, would, could, could jeopardize agreements that Israel has with the Palestinian Authority, that the United States has with the Palestinian Authority, economic dislocations in the region, and that the Palestinians actually stood to lose uh, some of the very substantive gains they have uh, achieved over the last, especially the last three, four years. Um, which would be a shame, be a tragedy for Palestinians, and, and, and a setback for the peace process. Got it. Thank you.